So just a few housekeeping items to get started. Um, we will be taking questions throughout the presentation via the chat application in Teams, and we will answer them in the last eight to 10 minutes of the webinar. So if you have questions at any point, please type them in the chat at any time. A little introduction about Zact. We are a solution-focused consulting firm based in Sandy, Utah, helping clients enhance productivity and create better work experiences with the assistance of their technology investments. Our team of architects, developers, designers, analysts, and project managers are passionate Microsoft experts who bring both innovative approaches and best practice methodologies to all of our client partnerships. We are here to help you get the most out of your product productivity tools like SharePoint, Office 365, and Teams. We can show you how to organize, share, and secure documents and information with SharePoint and modern internet portals, build powerful dashboards in Power BI, as well as other complementary technologies to assist you in simplifying and automating your business process needs and increasing communication across your company. We're excited to have you join us today to learn how utilizing SharePoint online features allows for you to collaborate more effectively with your team and create a better document management experience throughout your company. Now, let me introduce our presenter for today, Alyssa Smith. Alyssa has been a software applications facilitator for over 20 years. She has been a technical writing consultant and adjunct instructor at Davis Technology College and Weber State University. She has taught classes for Nike Corporation and local Utah companies like Lifetime Products. She loves teaching, traveling, and spending time with her family and dysfunctional dog. Once again, please ask your questions in the Teams chat application, and at the end of the presentation, we will have Alyssa answer them. I'm Aubrey, I am with, uh, I'm the marketing assistant at Zach Consulting, and I wanna thank you again for joining us, and now I'm gonna turn the time over to Alyssa for the presentation. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the event. Really appreciate having you join us today. Uh, and a huge thank you to Aubrey for being our, our moderator and for being the support team from Zach Consulting. We've actually hosted a few of these events over the last four months with the uh, challenges of the pandemic. We came together and decided that we could put some of these events together to help support uh, Utah-based companies and also companies from around the world. Uh, these, these sessions are recorded. We actually have some sessions on Microsoft Teams that are available through the Zach Consulting um, internet site, and I should say internet site, and also uh, one on Office 365. Do keep in mind that these sessions are only an hour, and so we will pause at the middle and at the end for Q&A. Um, and again, a couple of ways to do that because we have everyone muted. If you look at the bottom of our meeting room that we're using, we're actually using Microsoft Teams, as many of you have figured out to help host this event. You will see a toolbar if you move your mouse pointer towards the bottom of the, uh, again, slide that you're seeing right now. And if you look at the toolbar that will come up, the third button in from the right, it's about the third or fourth. It looks like a sticky note. It has a white border around it. You can post questions there in the chat because we do have most people muted to help cut down on background noise. And then what we'll do is I'll slow down at the end, middle and end of the session. And we'll spend a few minutes with uh, looking at those questions. Um, and again, if I don't have a great answer, I'll try to give you some resources. I am going to share a few links to Microsoft sites um, at the end of the session that I will also post into the chat as well. But really appreciate you being here. And I do want to go ahead and get into the content. Do remember that this is kind of really geared for end users. We're looking at SharePoint Online, not from the administration administrative side because it's a whole different world, but what your end users experience on a daily basis. We really want to look at SharePoint Online, trying to understand what it is, why people use it, and then we're also going to focus on the, the functionalities within it that can be really powerful and help people. So our four objectives today would be to look at how do we get to SharePoint Online, especially within Office 365. We want people to understand where those different doorways to SharePoint Online are. We're also gonna talk about why SharePoint Online? What makes it different than other versions of SharePoint Online? We're going to talk about some of the myths about SharePoint. And I also know that a lot of people have had negative experiences with SharePoint in the past. One of the challenges for a lot of organizations when they bring SharePoint Online is helping people get past those old negative experiences that they may have had to understand how SharePoint Online is an online experience. So it really frees them from a lot of maybe those experiences they had previously that may still give them nightmares 
course. I acknowledge that because I've heard a lot of those stories. We're also going to see how SharePoint Online integrates with Microsoft Teams. This is probably my very favorite functionality in um, using SharePoint Online is that it gives people the opportunity to actually really use SharePoint Online without really having to interface with it that much inside of the Teams interface. It's a very powerful way to actually introduce users to SharePoint without ever even having to tell them that it's SharePoint. And then we are going to go in and spend a little bit of time comparing a team site to a communication site. We're going to kind of look at different flavors of SharePoint Online. But again, remember, you can post your questions to the chat. We'll slow down towards the uh, middle and end. And then these sessions are being recorded. And again, I would love to have you guys go to the Zach Consulting site and check out the sessions that we have done on Microsoft Teams and also on um, Office 365. But again, very introductory, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go ahead and change my screen share. And I'm going to go into a demonstration environment. And the first thing that we want to do as we do this is talk about why SharePoint Online. And we're going to explore SharePoint Online as we do that. So this will take just a moment as I do the great switch over. So you're going to just be seeing an empty desktop. One thing that I want to talk about as we're getting started is that many of your users, including you, like I said, may have had challenging experiences with SharePoint Online. It's very common for me because I'm a Microsoft facilitator to go into an organization. And when I mention the word SharePoint, a lot of people want to walk out of the room. And the reason for that is that they've used older versions of SharePoint that had a pretty scary interface for people that are not very technically minded. And it's been very challenging for them. So one of the big hurdles that we face in some organizations is that if users have had negative experiences with SharePoint Online in the past or SharePoint, it's a little bit difficult. Sometimes also we have users that just get overwhelmed the minute we mention something new, right? So one of the first things I like to mention to people is that SharePoint Online is a platform. And what that means is that it allows you to do many different things. So when we introduce SharePoint Online, we like to help people understand that it's a tool that allows them to do a lot of different things. And so what we're going to do today is try to show you some of those things that SharePoint Online can do. Things like share files, of course, is a huge one and organize files, share information, even have um, even lists of events that people can see. Also, it gives an organization a way to put content online so that their employees can get to it from anywhere, especially in situations like we're running into right now with this challenging pandemic that we're all facing. This is a way to help organizations continue to work. So first of all, how do we get to SharePoint Online? I know you've been staring at my desktop for a minute, but I had to give that little spiel to kind of open the door. So SharePoint Online is actually part of Office 365. So when it comes to getting into it, one of the first things I like to introduce to users is you've got to get logged into SharePoint Online. So I just want to remind everybody that when it comes to logging in, what users are going to want to be reminded of is that they need to access Office 365. And I know this is taking us all the way back to the beginning. So please be patient with me. But you have to remind your users that this is an application just like OneDrive for Business or even, for example, the online versions of Office. They get to it the same way they get to their other Office 365 applications. That's a great thing because it means even if they need to uh, work from home during a pandemic, they can still get to their content. So notice what I've done here is I've opened up a web browser. I've navigated to my Office 365 login. So the Microsoft portal and I'm going to go ahead and sign in and again this is the point where it would ask them for their company email their address and any other multi uh, multi-factor authentication they need to do to get a secure login to their Office 365 account and for a lot of us while we're working at home during the pandemic this means that once I log in I've got to Office 365 and now I can get to all of my Office 365 applications. Now, honestly, when it comes to Office 365, SharePoint Online is the most powerful application in your Office 365 suite. I know some people might uh, want to fight with me about that comment, but when it comes to being able to do many different things, unlike, for example, PowerPoint here that just allows us to create presentations, which are fantastic, SharePoint Online allows us to do many things. And the biggest one is create basically websites that we can use to connect people with inside our organization and also outside. So one doorway for users to SharePoint Online is this icon right here. Now notice again, if they didn't see it here, they could also come up here and type it in. 
and you'll see that letter S logo for it taking us to SharePoint. Now, this is also where we need to look at, have people in your organization used other versions of SharePoint? I know I've also mentioned that a few times. If they have, it's important to help them understand that this is the latest version of SharePoint and it's entirely online. Again, everything that they're going to use here is available to, to them from anywhere if they have a secure internet login to their Office 365 account. And that's really a fantastic concept because Prior to SharePoint Online, many organizations were using SharePoint on-premise, which was different because much of the content was still stored and saved on local uh, networks. And this is different because it is part of Office 365. So what you're seeing on my screen right now is a view called the Sites page. And this is, again, another doorway to access content that you as a user have permission to view within SharePoint Online. And we have to realize that because the world of the internet is infinite, there could be so much content here. And this is an example of a company called Contoso that's really robustly using SharePoint Online, both internally and externally to share content with their employees and also with their customers. So let's look at a few of the facets of this sites page. And I know if you've seen this before, be patient with me, but it's important for users to understand the benefits of this doorway. It's like going to the shopping mall, okay, um, for SharePoint Online. Notice right here, that I'm seeing that I'm in SharePoint. So this is letting me know what area of Office 365 I'm in. And underneath, I have different SharePoint sites that I'm following within my organization. And you'll see here, it's showing me a list of these different sites. And this is just like following a normal website, but again, it's within your organization. So you'll see here that I can come to any of these followed sites and click on them, and then it would actually take me to that specific SharePoint site within my organization. And of course, I would only be allowed to favorite and go to sites that I have permission to go to. And again, because we're in a web browser, the great news is it's very easy for me to come in and click on the back arrow and back out of something. So as I scroll down here, you're going to see different types of sites. So I just want you to see here that the sites that come down here under frequent, these are going to be the sites that people are visiting inside my organization, right? Which makes sense. And we'll see that in the top right corner of the cards representing the sites, there is a star. So as I'm going through these different sites, if I see something that I know I'd like to go back to, all I have to do is go to a star that is not filled in, click on it, and that will favorite that particular site. So I just came in and favorited the Give It Contoso site. And now what will happen is it will add it right here to my followed sites. And again, as time goes on, if I have a site that I don't need in there anymore, I can come in and unfavorite it. Right? So that's a way for you to control your doorways to the different sites that you have permission to use. Now, also, if you come in here and look, you'll see that there are news sites that are listed at the top. And these are different, again, sites that my organization has created, and they're sharing information with me uh, by using this part of the sites page. And I can come into any of these and click on them and get updates. And these are a site called a news site and they are SharePoint site made to share information. And you can see here that it's got specific information about an upcoming thing that we're doing, a brown bag event, which may be canceled due to the pandemic. But again, we're gonna see that this site is set up uh, for a company that's actually got people at work. Now, what other things can I do from here besides go to different sites? Another thing that I can also do is search. Now, sometimes people think, oh, she's gonna talk about searching for a website. Yes, but the thing you also need to realize about SharePoint Online is beyond making websites, it has a very powerful search component. So right here, I'm gonna come up first of all, and I'm gonna select to do a search. And of course, the search bar is right there in the top middle. This is something that Microsoft is trying really hard to do right now is put their stuff right there. And if I come in and I start doing a search, say for retail, you'll notice that one of the very first things it does, even from a SharePoint site, is it starts trying to find files. Because Microsoft knows that usually when we're looking for something, we are looking for files. But really what I want to do is come to show more results because I want you to see how powerful the search results are. So notice here over on the right hand side of my search results, I'm seeing that there are tabs and I'm seeing here that this is showing me all. So everything is showing up here and as well to the right, I've got ways to 
basically pre-filter the uh, content that I'm seeing. So files, of course, would show me any files. And remember, this is a comprehensive search. So it's not just looking at title. It's actually looking at the content within the file as well. So if it's a website, it'll come up over the sites link. And right here, you can see that the retail sites right here. And as soon as I click on it, it will open it for me and take me to it. And this is actually what I was looking for. And we can see here that this is the retail site that's been created. Then, of course, I can go ahead and close that or notice right here that I still have SharePoint open right here and that's where my my search is. So it actually opened that retail SharePoint site in a separate browser tab, which means I can go back to my search results. Now you'll also see here that there are people. This would be, of course, if there's someone in the organization that might be related to that. And this is kind of cool because notice it's actually brought up Adele Vance. And if we look at her, we're seeing here that she's the manager over the retail group, which would make sense. Then, of course, news is going to be any news sites that have been created that have any mention of retail within them. So we're seeing a very comprehensive, again, result. But I want to show you a couple of other cool things. With files, we're seeing here that I've got a lot of different results coming back. I'm seeing I've got OneNote notebooks right here with retail. I've even, for example, got, in this case, if we look at this, it's a little graphic. So it's bringing back all kinds of stuff. But what if I'd like to filter those file results further down? Because this is a pretty big list. And notice there's even a next at the bottom. So what I want to do is come right here to the top right hand side of my search results and you'll see a filter anytime in Office 365 that you see a funnel. Just know that you're looking at filters and this is where we can go in and filter first of all by file type and then also by the last time the file was opened or modified. Now what I can do next after I do that, so let's say within the past month, you'll notice that with these files that takes me down to just one. And this is what I need. So from here, I can close the filters pane, click on this file. Now it will open in Excel online because again, remember we're using Office 365, but this was the spreadsheet that I was looking for. Within all those SharePoint sites, I was able to again, go all the way down and find this file that is part of a um, SharePoint online team site. We're actually gonna see this spreadsheet again. And notice it's opened right here in Excel online, but do remember that if you prefer to edit it in the desktop app, you have the open and desktop app option right here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close the spreadsheet. And again, another great thing about Office 365 is we never have to worry about saving anything because everything's online. So if I'd saved or made any changes to the spreadsheet, they would have automatically been saved for me. And notice again, my search results are still here. And I'm gonna go ahead and also close the retail uh, SharePoint site that I opened. Now to get back to SharePoint, notice right here, that in the top left corner, I've got my SharePoint, um, again, uh, header that I can click on, and that takes me right back out to the SharePoint Sites page. So I know that was a really kind of long tour, but sometimes people forget that not only can this be a doorway, it's also a very powerful search tool to not only find SharePoint sites, but also to find files and people related to those sites. So let's go ahead, and I want you to also see, now that we're in this SharePoint site, that I would like to come in and look at a thing called a news post. Now you'll notice that in the top left hand corner, and we're gonna come back to this at the end, that I can create a news post. Now right here, we already mentioned that news from sites. These are again, basically updates of important events or news that my organization wants to share with people. And so this is a kind of uh, feature that you can use in SharePoint Online. Again, you have to have permission to do this. So if you go in and look for this tool and it's not there, it's because you haven't been given permission to create a news post, but you click right here on this tool and you'll notice that it's showing me different, um, again, sites where I could publish news. And I will tell you that quite a few of these that we're seeing right here, like the market project team, the uh, US sales team, these are actually Microsoft teams that I'm part of that have SharePoint sites associated with them. And we'll see some of these uh, in the future. So right here, I actually have this digital initiative public relations site that I'm gonna click on. And this is how I could go in and create a news posting for that site. So notice right here, it's already pre-formatted, ready for me to start bringing in my content. So one thing to know about SharePoint Online is it's created so dummies like me 
can create a website. I don't have to know HTML. I don't have to know uh, anything about sheets. Um, this makes it a lot easier for me to work because it's set up with editing tools to help me be able to create, uh, again, additions to these SharePoint sites. So right here, I'm gonna come in and go ahead and add my information. So notice right here, I'm adding a title. And again, the reason it's saying Megan is that's who I am, by the way. So because I created it at playing Megan, in fact, if you come up here to the top right hand corner, you can see Megan's cute profile picture up there. That's why it shows her. Now I would like to add a little bit of, again, more details. So notice that in this web part on my news page that I'm creating, I have different options. And one of them is that I can come in and change the image that's here. And this is called editing a web part. We'll do this a little bit. When it comes to doing images, basically you could go to recent images, an image that maybe you have saved to your OneDrive for business. That again is gonna be your business cloud storage just for you within Office 365. You can also go to their stock images. So let's check that out. These are just images that Microsoft provides. And again, all I'm gonna do is type in a topic. Maybe we'll do lunch meeting. And we'll see if it finds anything. If not, we'll just do lunch. That might be a little bit, uh, a little bit more basic. And we can see what it brings up. And then I can say insert, and that would become my new graphic. Now, the other thing I can do, you'll notice here it says drag to create a focal point. I can actually drag this around until I kind of get it where I want it to go. When I'm done, notice that I can go ahead and say save as draft, that would just go ahead and update it. It doesn't mean it's been published yet, okay? Now to come in, you'll notice that additionally um, that there are other things that I can add to this. So notice right here, there's a comments area as well down at the bottom, but this is the start of my information. Notice right here is trying to give me lots of little helpful hints that there's an edit button that I can click on and this opens the page up so that I can now come in and add additional information. So now maybe I'd like to add the details. I'm gonna go ahead and click right here. This is called a web part, and these are the different components that you can use to build your SharePoint page. And in this case, we're doing a news posting. So maybe in this case, what I'd like to do is bring in some text. And this is just like a text box. So it opens up a text box and I can just start typing and notice here, I can go ahead and use the little editing tool up at the top. We'll say this is gonna be July 16th. And then I'm gonna go ahead when I'm done and come up right here and say, post news. Now this would of course be posted to the site that I had uh, added it to, which is the Digital Initiative Public Relations site. Right? And only the members of the organization that have permission to see this site would be able to, to go in and see this new news posting that I've added. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on the close button and we're going to go ahead and head back into the SharePoint sites page. We're going to do a little bit more with building a communication site towards the end of the session. But at this point, what I want to do is slow down and see if anyone's posted questions yet. I know we're a little bit ahead, but I don't want to break up the next part with um, with any pausing for questions because I want to save it for the end. I don't think there are any questions. Aubrey, have we had any posted yet to the chat? We do have one. We have, well, we actually have two. Do you have the rights to edit documents found? Yes. Um, yes, that's a great question. So it would depend, right? You might be able to view the document but not edit it. It would depend because remember when a document is shared with you through SharePoint online, there are different there are different permissions, right? So you might be able to view the document and it would still come up in your search results, but you may not be able to edit it, right? So you'll have to actually open the document and see if you have editing rights. So that's something that depends on how the owner of that SharePoint site has set up your permission to either view or edit, right, in the SharePoint site where you've been able to open that file from. So it'll depend on the document library within the SharePoint site that that files come from. So it's based on permissions. So even though it might be view only, you'd still be able to see it in your search results. The way you'll know you can edit it is when you go in and actually open it, you'll actually have those editing tools available to you. And you won't know until you actually open it up. Or you might be able to look at the properties before you open it and see if it says view only, for example. Yeah. 
And then we have one other question that's where can we find this webinar in case we want to watch it again? Also, is there a way to watch the Microsoft Teams and Office 365 webinar we hosted? And so if you go to the Zach.com website and go down to the very bottom of the page in the footer, there is a webinar link and you will find the Teams ones located there. Um, the Office 365 isn't on our website yet, but it will be shortly. Um, and we'll send out an email when that's available to all the people who have registered for this event. Aubrey, is there a way to create a link? Could we just post a link in the chat maybe for, for the, the Teams ones? Yep, for sure. I will do awesome. that. Awesome. Right. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's go ahead and transition over. And I want to talk about my favorite part of SharePoint Online. And this really goes back to the story that we were talking about at the beginning. And that is a lot of users are afraid of SharePoint Online. Maybe not you guys, but people you work with when you say SharePoint, they're going to crawl under their desks or their tables or their beds, depending on where they're working right now, right? And so what we, what we want to do is help ease people's journeys into SharePoint Online. And one of the ways that Microsoft has done that, and this is on purpose, is that SharePoint SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams are buddies. Okay, so we are going to spend a little bit of time looking at how Microsoft Teams interfaces with SharePoint Online. And the reason I love this so much is it's a great way to introduce users to SharePoint Online. They don't even have to know they're using SharePoint Online. But, you know, usually it's a good idea to let them know. But Teams gives SharePoint Online a fantastic interface that makes it so much easier for people to work with SharePoint. So we actually at this point are going to go ahead and leave the sites page where it is. And I'm going to go ahead and head back into Microsoft Teams. Now, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about Microsoft Teams. What we want to focus on is how SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams work together. And really, if you look at Microsoft Teams, the other application that probably plays the most important role inside of Teams is SharePoint Online. Now, we all know that Microsoft Teams does a lot of things. And like when I do a session on Teams, I introduce Teams as what we call a hub platform app platform application because Teams actually partners with many different parts of Office 365. But the relationship we're going to focus on in this session is that SharePoint online relationship. The reason it's so critical is that usually when you ask a group within an organization that's needing to collaborate on a project, one of the key factors that's very critical to them to have access to is file storage. And SharePoint Online is a fantastic file storage tool. But as I've already introduced, it does many other things as we've already seen. So within Microsoft Teams, we know that a team is any group of people, both within and outside an organization, depending on security, that are coming together to get something accomplished. So in our demo environment, we're seeing right here that we have the Market Project Team. This is a group within the Contoso organization that's coming together to work on a project called the Market Project. And one of the critical things that they need is a place for file storage. Now notice that within my team, the the structure of a team is to have sub areas under the team that are called channels. And you'll see here, and the reason we're mentioning these is these tie back to SharePoint Online. So there's an important reason to know about these channels. Now channels have a lot of different ways to define them, but I like to define them as a sub project or a breakout space within the team. So we'll see that right now this team has five different channels. And do know that the default channel on a team is called the general channel. And the reason these are important is they give the team a way to focus different things that they're working on. Now the area that we want to again go in and look at within each of these channels is the files tab. So you'll see that when I've gone to the general channel of my team that I have a files tab. I'm going to click on this. And this is really awesome. Yes, I was able to use the word awesome in my training <laughs> because suddenly we're seeing a list of files. Now, a couple of things, questions that I often get from people, what kind of stuff can I put in here? Well, anything that your organization has said you can store in SharePoint Online can be put here. So anything that can be put online in cloud storage can be put in this area. So video files, sound files, spreadsheets. Does it have to be Microsoft content? No, it doesn't. Could it be a OneNote notebook? Absolutely. Can it be a JPEG? Yes. Who has permission to access these files? Well, from within Teams, it's anyone who's a member of the team. 
Now, the only thing that's a little bit different is if you have what's called a private channel, which is another topic within Teams. If you do have a private channel set up, then only the members of the private channel would have permission to access these files. But since the files I'm looking at are in a standard channel, every member of the team has permission to access them. So how do we get files in here? Well, let's look at a couple of options. One of them is to click on the upload button. This would allow Megan to come in, find a spreadsheet. So notice here she's on her local computer. She's going to find a PowerPoint presentation and she's going to copy it. So as it uploads it, it's copying it from her hard drive into her files tab of the general channel. And now all the members of her team will be able to access this PowerPoint presentation. Now, can she also create new content here? Yes, as a member of the team, you'll notice there's a new button she can click on. Now to organize, she could actually create a folder within this content. And maybe this is where she wants to put her PowerPoint files so that they're a little bit separated out. So in this files tab, you do have the ability to create some organization. Now, how would we move those PowerPoint files into that folder? So you can see the folder up here. We're going to go ahead and select them. And notice, very similar to OneDrive for Business, I don't actually click on a file to open it up. I'm going to select the file by coming to the left-hand side and clicking. This allows me to select more than one at a time. And then I can have either left drag, and sometimes this is a little bit slow because notice mine's being slow right now, or if the left drag isn't behaving because sometimes it doesn't want to be happy, the other thing you can do is come up to the ribbon and notice because we have multiple files selected, it's updated, you can also select move. And this will actually let me come in and select the PowerPoint folder that I just created and move those PowerPoint files into it. So if the left drag isn't behaving itself, you can always use the move button. Now the files are in there. All we need to do to get into the PowerPoint files folder is just click on it and kaboom, we'll be inside. And now we've organized the files within that files tab. Now, one more option for getting files into this files tab. And believe it or not, we are talking about SharePoint right now this whole time because this files tab is actually a SharePoint document library. So I know some of you are saying, why is she showing me all this stuff in Teams? Because when you click on the files tab of any channel, you're actually accessing a SharePoint document library from inside Microsoft Teams. But notice the really neat thing is I don't have to be able to know how to use SharePoint to do this because Microsoft Teams is allowing me to do all of it from within the Teams interface. Let's say that I actually have created a spreadsheet in my files tab in OneDrive. So over here in Teams, I'm going to click on files and I'm going to go to OneDrive for business. Remember, this is the individual business users content that's stored in Office 365. And I do think that users need to have a healthy relationship with both OneDrive for business and SharePoint Online. And I actually recommend getting cozy with OneDrive for business before SharePoint Online, because if a user is comfortable with OneDrive, they're going to have a much easier journey to SharePoint SharePoint Online, because OneDrive for Business is actually based on SharePoint Online in the back end. But in the front, front end, it's OneDrive. And we can see the cute blue cloud in the top left corner. So this, these are files that Megan has permission to access. And in here, she has a spreadsheet called R&D Engineering Costs Quarter 1 that she would like to move to the Files tab of her team, the Mark 8 project team. So notice here, just like I did in the files tab of the channel, I'm selecting the file by coming to the left hand side. And maybe we'll do both of these spreadsheets. And again, up at the top within OneDrive, I have a ribbon that's now updated to give me a move option that I'm going to select. Now notice that I could move the file within my OneDrive, but I actually would like to move the files from OneDrive to Teams. And right here, I can now select Teams. I can select the Mark 8 project team and then the channel because remember each channel has its own files tab. So I'm going to select, of course, the general channel of the Mark 8 project team. And now I'm going to come down and say move. So this will not be copying those spreadsheets. It will be moving them out. And notice now if we scroll back down in my OneDrive, they're no longer here. And remember, the files when they were in OneDrive were just owned by Megan. But now, if I go back to my Teams view and I go back to the Files tab of the Mark 8 project team, 
I'm seeing that those two spreadsheets have been moved over to the files tab of the general channel of the team. Now think for a minute, who owns those spreadsheets now that Megan has moved them? It's no longer just Megan. And I know it's a hypothetical question. <laughs> you guys can't answer. Um, but I hope you're thinking the whole team owns the files now. And you are correct. Good job. It's the entire team because when we go from OneDrive to a team, the permissions of the files automatically change because now these files are stored with the team. Now, why is that? What are we actually looking at here with all these, again, different moving of files that we've been doing? When a team is created, a SharePoint team site is created to go with that team. You don't have to do anything for this to happen. In fact, I'm just going to show you this. We're going to come down to the bottom left-hand corner and create a new team. Now, my new team is going to be a private team. I'm going to build it from scratch. I'm going to call it ABC Training. And I know you're going, why is she showing us this? Because I want you to understand that as soon as this team is created, right at this point, when I click on the Create button, within SharePoint Online, a team called ABC Training, a SharePoint Online team site has just been created. Now, at this point, all I'm going to do is bring in the membership from my organization. I'm going to be using a distribution list called Retail, so an Outlook distribution list, and all the members of that a distribution list are going to be added to my my new team. So here we see it over here. But the thing to understand is that a SharePoint team site was just created and I didn't have to do anything but make a team. Now within that new team, I have one channel. For each channel that you create, a separate document library is created within your team site. So let's go back up here to the Mark 8 project team and take a look at the files tab that I was just working in. And now let's go ahead and come down to the ABC training team that I just created and take a look at the files tab in the new general channel of that brand new team. And you'll see on this one, there aren't any files here yet. And it's telling me that it can't get the files quite yet. The reason for that is the channel and team are so new, it needs just a few more minutes to spin up. But once it's done, it takes a few minutes, I'll be able to start adding files here. Now let's go ahead and look at options for accessing SharePoint from Teams. We're going to get brave now. And again, the use case here is, hey, we're ready to start working in these files beyond uh, Microsoft Teams. So one of the things that I want you to see with this, again, um, ribbon that you have from any of the files tabs inside of Teams is an option that will say open in SharePoint. And this is where we take Teams. And when we click right here, we're now going to go back to Office 365, back to our default web browser, and back into SharePoint Online. But notice if we look at this, it's the exact same list of files we were just in, right? But the difference here is that now we're looking at the files inside of the SharePoint team site that was created when the Mark 8 project team was created, just like I talked about when I created the ABC training team a few moments ago. But notice how in many ways this is similar. I still have my PowerPoint files folder that we created. All I need to do to open it is click on it. It takes me into those PowerPoint files. A nice thing that SharePoint Online does is it actually shows you the file path for the different folders that are being generated. And I can actually use this as a back out method to go back up. So say I want to get back to the general channel. Notice when I do that, now I've backed out of that folder. Another option if you've gone into a folder is, of course, to use the browser's back button. Now, what about opening these files? Can I do this from SharePoint Online inside of a document library? Absolutely. So right here, I want to go ahead and open up one of these spreadsheets. I'm going to click on it, and it's going to open in Excel Online, right? Just like we talked about, because we're using SharePoint Online, the default is to have these files open in the online applications. No big deal, right? We can use this. But now I want to take a step back and talk about, well, what if I want to go ahead and open this file and not have it open in the online version of the application. I want to open it in the desktop version. And I do have it open in the online version right now, but let's say I want to back out. So instead of clicking on it, again, remember we're working in SharePoint Online, so we have a few different options depending on our preferences. One of them is right-click if you're on a PC. 
You'll notice this gives you a secondary pop-up menu that you can use to manage how you open files. Another option is, of course, to come up to the open button up here in the ribbon. And then I'm a big fan of using the ellipses that are in uh, inside of Office 365. What's funny about SharePoint Online and OneDrive for Business is they're not horizontal, they're actually vertical. So notice that just look for three dots, either up and down or left to right. These will also open up the same menu that you saw when I right clicked. But the thing to see about this menu is that it gives you a choice as to how you'll open the file. And in this case, I want to open it in the app. If I pick open in browser, that's going to do what we just did already and open it in a browser tab. By selecting open an app, I can actually decide uh, that it's going to open an Excel desktop. So this allows the users to now get their file and then open it up in Microsoft Excel that's installed locally on their computer. And the reason it takes a little bit of time is because Excel wasn't open yet. So we've got to wait for Excel desktop to open and then that spreadsheet will open up inside of it. Now, another additional thing that I want you to see with this spreadsheet is remember we're coming from a team and we talked about a few minutes ago that when a file is stored inside of the files tab of a channel, every member of the team has permission to access those files. They also, by default, unless you change it on the SharePoint side, have permission to not only view the files, but also edit the files. So when a file is added to Teams by default, every team member has full editing rights. And right now what we're seeing is that I actually have both Megan and her coworker or team member, fellow team member, inside of the spreadsheet at the same time. And what we're seeing here is a feature that is part of Office 365 called real-time co-authoring. And yes, Microsoft coined that phrase. I did not. I like to just simplify it and call it co-authoring. So two people are in the same file at the same time. And in this case, Megan has the file open in Excel desktop. And Patty actually has the file still open in Microsoft Teams. So how do we know that Patty's here? And I know you guys think this is pretty obvious, but I've, I've got to point it out. You'll see that Patty has a different colored border around the cell that she's clicking in. So right here, if I look, I can see that when I go to the top right hand corner um, of Patty's device, you'll see she has a different color. Okay. And as she clicks in different cells, I can see her moving around. Okay. Or in this case, I should say I'm playing Megan. So let me have Patty move. Sorry, guys. I was confusing myself a little bit. Now, another thing also to notice up here in the top right hand corner is that I'm also seeing that it's telling me what cell Patty last clicked in. And you know, the reason it's showing uh, Megan up here as well, up in cell A5, I'll show you this, is because she still has the spreadsheet open up here in the browser tab. So she actually has the spreadsheet open twice. So that's why we're seeing Megan so many times. You're probably wondering, why is Megan in there twice? It's because she has the spreadsheet open twice. So back in the desktop client, let's talk about a couple of things with this. Can we both make changes to the spreadsheet and would we see those changes? Well, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and have Patty add a title to the spreadsheet. And I wanna see that Megan can see the changes as Patty makes them. So I don't know if you guys can see, but up in rows one and two, Patty has just added two new blank rows to the top of the spreadsheet. And then I'm going to have her add a title. And again, why are we doing this? Just so that we can see that yes, two team members can be in a file that's stored in Teams in a SharePoint document library through SharePoint Online and that their changes will be made at the same time. So I'm having her add a title we'll see that title get added. And then I'm gonna have her add a little bit of formatting to make it a little bit bigger. And then you got another question that people often ask is, well, do we have to worry about saving anything? And as many of you know, we don't because everything's saving as the changes are being made. So we don't actually have to worry about saving because everything's saving back to cloud storage, which is one of the exciting things about SharePoint Online. And again, it doesn't matter which version of SharePoint we're working in here. We can have Patty and Teams, we can have Megan and the desktop app, everything saves back to that SharePoint document library. Now I'm gonna go ahead and have, uh, have them both close out of the spreadsheet because I want to show you one other exciting feature that's available through a SharePoint document library. And I just have to get this guy so that we can also close it in the browser.
So here we are back in our, again, SharePoint document library that's associated with that team. And another great feature that comes within teams in SharePoint document libraries is a thing called version history. And what this is, is that for each file that's stored in the document library, Microsoft Teams is saving a version of that file for every user and every time that they're in the file in the file, excuse me. Now your IT can determine how many versions will be stored, but also it can be infinite depending on how it's set up. So how do we access that version history? What we're gonna do here is come in and again, we wanna access that ellipses or additionally, you can also right click. When we do this, you'll see that version history is generally about fourth from the bottom. When you click on it, it's gonna take you into the version history for that particular file. And notice what we'll see here is that the oldest version is at the bottom. So that's the 1.0. The highest numbered version will be, of course, the most recent one. And I like to call the highest numbered version the active version, meaning that if anyone's currently in the file, that's always the one they'll have open. Now let's say that I went into the file this morning, started creating it, and then Patty accidentally came in at 944 and made a mistake in the file. Now, what options do I have? Of course, we can go in and notice that for each version, it's a user's name and a time. And it's gonna ask everybody if you can stay muted. We're gonna have just a couple more minutes and then we're gonna do some Q&A and I promise we'll end, we'll end on time. And all you need to do to mute is just click on the little microphone down on the toolbar. I think somebody just unmuted. I think I'm hearing pages turning. So what we're gonna do here is notice that options I have for this particular version. I can view it, I can restore it, but here's the situation. Everything was good until Patty came in at 944 and messed something up. So what I'm gonna do is come to this 2.0 version. I'm going to select it and then I'm going to say Restore. Restore means make a copy of this version and make it the active version. So when we click on restore, notice up here it tells me that I'm going to replace the current version with this selected one. We click on OK. And now I have a 4.0 version, which is actually a copy of the 2.0. But the important thing to know is if any member of our team tries to go into any of the, again, into any of the documents, they would always go into this 4.0 version. And of course, when they go in, it will make another version and so on and so forth. But the active version is always the highest numbered one. Now, is this just limited to Microsoft documents and files? It is not. It's anything that's stored in your SharePoint document library. Now, one more thing again to kind of help build this idea of what happens when Microsoft Teams creates a SharePoint document library and that SharePoint team site. Notice over here on the left that we can see the navigation for our SharePoint team site that's associated with the Mark 8 project team. If we come over here to the left and look at documents, notice that what I'm seeing here is that there's a separate folder within this documents area of my SharePoint team site that has the same name as the channel of my team. Notice that these are each of the channels, including the general channel. So every time a new channel is created in your team, it creates a folder within the associated team site, and it creates that folder to put the files that are associated with that channel. And if I come into any of these folders from the SharePoint team site side, it would take me into the files associated with that specific channel. Now, great news is for most people, do they ever have to dig this deep? Probably not. But if you are gonna be using SharePoint Online, the great thing is if you can use both Teams and SharePoint Online, you can really very effectively and powerfully work with files associated with your team. Now, going back inside of Teams, if I come right here and click on Teams, you'll notice that all my users really have to work with is just what's right here in front of their faces. But as we've said, the power is if you do need to go in and use SharePoint Online for any of the channels of your team, you have the opportunity to go directly to that SharePoint Online site right here. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is a different type of SharePoint site. We'll take just about three or four minutes here, and it's called a communication site. So the SharePoint Online sites that we've seen so far are a news site and then also a team site. 
do know that team sites can of course be created from outside Microsoft Teams. But the neat thing about Teams is, like we said, it automatically creates one for you. And the thing that makes a team site unique is it's generally for close knit collaboration within an organization. Now, what I want to do at this point is go back to my SharePoint sites page. Again, that main doorway to all the SharePoint sites that I have permission to access. And I want to look at creating a communication site. So the thing that sets a communication site apart from a team site is that a communication site is made to broad broadcast information to a variety of audiences. So it's really made for both internal and external communication. So what I want to do is come right here this time from the sites page to create site. Again, you have to have permission to do this. So if you go into your SharePoint sites page and it's not there, it's because your SharePoint admin in your organization has not given you permission to do so. We're going to select communication site. Now notice that I have different choices here. These are basically different, um, again, templates for the page. There is a topic page, there is a showcase, and there is a blank. I'm going to be boring and do a blank. I just call this training updates. Now it's important to remember that when we create a site, both a team site, a news site, or a um, communication site, it's creating a URL. So as I type in the name for my new communication site, notice it's showing me again the website address that will be created because this is SharePoint Online. Everything's going online. And of course, We're going to go ahead and select a language here because again, we know Microsoft, they do stuff all over the globe and then we're going to say finish. Now my site's going to be blank. So what I'm going to do briefly is spend a few minutes using web parts to create my site. So when I come to it, the good news is it does have the correct title at the top and notice it does already have some pre-built tools in it to help me start. For example, documents. Let's click here and see what this is giving us. This is already creating a document library, right, for my new communications site. Now, there aren't any files in it yet, but notice right here, let's say that I had a few PowerPoint presentations that are stored locally on my computer that I now want to bring into this SharePoint communication site. I can go in, find those PowerPoints, and it will copy them into, again, my communication site. So those people that I give permission to access the site would be able to get to those files. And you can see right here that it just is finishing an upload. And whenever you upload, it means copy. So the originals are still on my hard drive. So again, remember that when you upload something, a good use case is to decide what you're gonna do with the original files. Now back here on the home page of my communication site, I want to add some content. So over here on the right, I have to click on the edit button. This is where I'm going to go in and use those web part components to help me create my page. Now you'll see right now that all I have is a plus sign. And what this wants me to do is decide what the layout of my web part is going to be. So right here when I click on this, at this point it's set up to just have one big section in it. But I want you to also see over here on the left that there's also a plus sign that would allow me to actually change the layout so that it's not just one column. I could also come in, for example, and have uh, a third left with, again, a right. So now you can actually separate your, uh, your page out. It's a lot like setting it up as a large table. So what I want to do now on the left is come in and notice the different web parts. There's everything from text boxes to file viewers. Let's go ahead and bring in an image again. This time I'm going to do a web search for an image and I want to go ahead. This is using the Bing image search. It calls it web search, but if you're familiar with the Bing image search, very similar where you're searching online. So do we need to be uh, do we need to be cognizant of Creative Commons? Absolutely. So remember, Creative Commons is again um, safe ground. But once we select the graphic, notice all the different ones I can pick from here. It will then add that graphic in. And then notice all the different options that I have here for cropping and of course all the little help tips it's trying to give me here. Um, and then also notice you have right here alignment options as well. So you can actually move the graphic around. This graphic's a little bit too small. We'll see if it's going to try to keep it on the over there on the left and I might need to adjust it. But for the sake of time, do you remember captions are also nice so people can actually 
if someone, for example, has any kind of um, disability, captions can help people know what's actually showing. Now, moving forward, one more web part we can also bring in. If you click right here on the plus sign, it's a file viewer. And this means that you have a document. Now notice in this case, it's automatically taking me to the PowerPoints that I already added to the document library that was created with my SharePoint site. Or I could also come in and go to my OneDrive. Keep in mind the problem with bringing something from your OneDrive is it would have to be shared with everyone who's in that has permission to access this communication site. So in my case, instead, I'm gonna upload a file locally from my device. And this is a Word document that's, again, going to be added to my uh, SharePoint site. It does take a little bit of time for it to be brought in. You can see how it's being coming up. It's a Word document. Now, I'm not done yet. I actually haven't saved it. You can see that it's telling me it's being saved, but that just means for me locally. When I'm ready to actually have it be available for people to see, we have to come in and republish. This means that it would be available for other people to actually come in and start viewing. Do I need to add a lot of other content? Absolutely. But again, the big thing to remember that we saw today is that you have communication sites, which are made to broadcast to wide audiences, both internal and external to the organization. Team sites, which are made really for internal close-knit groups inside the organization or even small collaborative groups that could include people from outside that oftentimes are tied back to Microsoft Teams. And then the third type we looked at was that news site, which is made to give people updates about events and other important information. But here's the big main takeaway with SharePoint Online. It's not the big scary monster that people think it is. It's a very powerful platform about sharing it information, also putting information available in a place where everyone both inside and outside the organization, depending on permissions, can get to. And really one of the main things that I hope you're seeing with this event is that SharePoint Online is not scary. It's about helping people get what they need so they can be more productive. We did spend quite a bit of time focusing on how SharePoint Online and Microsoft Teams connect. And that's because for a lot of us, that connection is a fantastic introduction to SharePoint Online and a very powerful way to give groups within a, an organization a place to store their files. And SharePoint Online is actually the tool that's doing that. Thanks everybody so much for joining. We're going to have a couple of minutes for Q&A. I know we're, we're going a little bit short on time, so we'll stay as long as we need to to help answer questions. I am going to go ahead and put just a couple of links into the, uh, into the uh, chat area for everybody. So the share screen is going to stop for just a minute and see what questions people have had. And then a huge thank you to Zach Consulting and also Aubrey for helping host us. Um, and really appreciate everybody joining. I hope this has helped give you a few ideas about how SharePoint Online can really be a very useful tool to anybody in an organization. And being comfortable with SharePoint Online can really help users' journeys. So those links are getting posted right now. Awesome. Okay, and then I just want to thank Alyssa really fast and let you guys know that if your company is in need of any training opportunities and maybe you'd like to have your whole team be part of one of these types of trainings, Alyssa is available for company trainings. Um, if you want to reach out to her or reach out to me, um, or you can respond to the email that the event was set up with, uh, and we can work on getting your company set up for a training if you need that. Um, so our first question is, how do I know my permissions? And this was related to uh, SharePoint when you were showing things before in the questions. Great, that's a really great question. So let me just really quickly reshare the screen because it's better to see it than to talk about it, right? We'll talk about it as we see it. So when you are in Teams, you can't see that. That's one of the things that's a little bit frustrating from Teams. So do know that if the files inside of Teams, you automatically have if it's just been added to Teams, you will automatically have full permission to both edit and view the document. However, if the file has been added by someone else, okay, and then you're viewing the file from inside SharePoint, okay, notice that if you go to the file and select it, okay, you'll see that when you come over to the right, 
there is a little circle with a letter I inside of it. This is the details pane. And again, I'm in a SharePoint Online document library here. We can't see this from inside Teams. You actually have to, have to go to SharePoint Online to see this. When you do this, you can see that it opens up an information pane about the file. And right here, it will actually let you see, if you go to manage access, who actually has permission to access the file. Now, if you try to do this and it's not available, it means that you don't have permission to actually go into this area of SharePoint. It can be, again, locked down by your SharePoint administrator. So if you can open the file and edit it, you have full editing rights. But if you really want specifics, you need to actually go into this, again, information pane or details pane. And when I go here to manage access, this would let me see who the different owners of the file are, and these are SharePoint groups, okay, so there are different people within the, again, organization, and as I scroll down, I can see individually who these owners are, and if you're an owner, that means you have full editing rights, and because Megan is an owner of the file, notice she can actually come in, stop sharing the file, or give other people within the organization permission to the file, and even share the file with people outside of the organization. So two takeaways, you can't set up permissions from inside Teams. You have to go to SharePoint Online to do it. You have to have permission to get into this part for a file, but this is where you could come in, notice, and actually give an additional person in your organization permission to edit the file. So for, for example, let's say I want to make sure that my coworker Adele, the retail manager, has permission to edit the file, but notice I could also make it so she would be view only, and because I'm an owner, I can do that. I know that's kind of a long answer, but when you get to permissions with SharePoint, they're very, very powerful. Um, and again, if you have more questions, I can send you a link that can help you see this at a more granular level. But one of the things that makes SharePoint document libraries very powerful is that you can have separate permissions for every single person, including people from outside your organization. And that's something that Microsoft Teams does not allow you to do. Sweet. Um, our next question is, can you add attributes to files so that you can sort or filter instead of using folders? Yes, absolutely. So within SharePoint Online, each file, notice again that I'm in the details for this particular file. You can come in and you can actually come in and actually add content in this, again, details area under properties. These are, this is where we get into the area of metadata, which is very important with SharePoint Online. Um, and again, the idea is that you're adding what we call tags. Um, and when we click right here, you'll notice these are different things that we can add so that when someone goes in and tries to uh, search for the file, rather than having everything inside of folders, you can actually have these tags and properties associated with the file. And this would allow someone to do a search and rather than having to go through a bunch of folders to find it, they would be able to search by this topic and find it instead. So like maybe I also want this to be known as the employee engagement training plan, even though we've called it the employee initiative or the employee, me employee engagement initiative, I can set up this title for it. And if someone does a search for this file inside of SharePoint Online, it would also come up because it's associated with this title. So this is an additional property that I'm adding to it as well. And this is something that you can do. And then notice right here that within, again, any SharePoint document library, let me just show you this if I can close the details pane. You'll see here that you have the filters pane. And so again, we have the opportunity to do lots of different filtering when we're in a SharePoint document library. You can also create custom views as well, because notice right now I'm in the all documents view, but I can also come down and actually create custom views for files to make it easier for people to see things grouped in different ways. So the answer to that is yes, very powerful ability to add metadata to files uh, and also to create custom views so that when it comes to finding something, it's not having to be done folder within folder like we're used to. It's a different way of working and it scares people a little bit, but it's very powerful because actually folders take a lot of time to sort through. Great. Um, what does versioning look like? So like we showed you, versioning is for each user for the time that they're in the file. So if I'm in a file five times in a day, a separate version will be, will be stored for that file. So for example, back here in that same spreadsheet that we were in previously, you have to select the file. This has to be done in SharePoint Online. You have to go to the three dots in the middle or you can right click 
and select version history. You can also get to it from the ribbon up at the top of your SharePoint document library. And again, remember that it saves a separate version for each user. That's why we're seeing Megan and Patty and Patty and Megan, because for each team member or each, again, person within the organization that has permission to access the file and the SharePoint document library, it's going to save a different version for each user. And again, this can be infinite. Some organizations cut it off after 26 versions, but I've seen some organizations that don't. So you'll have 2,000 versions of the same document saved. But the thing to remember is the highest numbered version is always going to be the one that's current. And let's say that I want to replace version 3 over the top of version 4. I can select the version by hovering, go to the arrow, and say restore. This means it will copy version 3, okay, and then it will actually make a version 5, which is now going to be the active version. So I'm basically leapfrogging version 4 because I copied version 3 and made version 5. Great. Is there a limit to the number of users that can be in a document at the same time? Again, it depends on the organization, but really there isn't. So within teams, it would be the number of people that are in your team, right? But for example, if you have a SharePoint communication site that's set up for customers and you've given many customers permission to edit a document, there really isn't a limit. So can it get really messy when lots of people are in a file? Absolutely. So I, I am in, I am in the, the group of when you are going to do co-authoring, that you do organized co-authoring, right? That you have people do sections, for example, and that you limit how many people access a file because it just gets messy, but there really isn't a limit. Is there a certain web browser that is required for all the features to work? Uh, no, actually there isn't. So what we would say is it's always going to be the latest version of the browser. So I'm using a Microsoft environment. So of course they're showing Microsoft Edge, <laughs> which I know some people hate. That's okay. If you want to use Chrome, you can. If you want to use Safari, you can. I will say that on a Mac, a few of these tools operate a little bit differently. But again, because we're online, most of it's going to be very similar because it doesn't matter what web browser you open it in. Do you keep in mind if you open... Um, um, any of these SharePoint sites on a smartphone, you can be using the SharePoint Online mobile app and things will look different because you're on a smaller screen, right? Things will operate a little bit differently if you're on an iPhone or an Android device because you don't have as much real estate space with your screen size. But still, the functionality is going to be similar. Okay, what are the key uses or differences between uh, SharePoint and OneDrive in terms of addition of files? Okay, so remember that OneDrive for Business is just for the individual user. And really the biggest difference between SharePoint Online and OneDrive, and I'm just going to go into OneDrive really briefly. And I know we've hit time, so if any of you need to go, huge thank you for joining. Love to have you communicate with Aubrey or myself through email. I did post my, my Zach Consulting email address to the chat. Feel free to email me. That's a great way to communicate with me if you do have questions or you want to, like I said, try to set up some training or contact Aubrey. But Right here, I've gone into Megan's OneDrive, back to that question. These files and folders that are in here are only owned by Megan and her organization. And of course, we always want to remind people that anything you put in OneDrive for Business needs to be business related, right? We don't want to put pictures of our puppy in here. But this is just her stuff. The only person in the organization that has permission to access these files is Megan. Now, when it comes to SharePoint Online, if we jump back to a SharePoint Online document library, the difference with SharePoint Online is that anyone who has permission within the organization, in this case, it's a team site, so the members of the team all have permission to access these sites. Now, for most organizations with OneDrive for Business, the storage size is one terabyte per user. Keep in mind that can be different depending on if you work for a government agency or a state agency. It can be different. Different organizations allocate different storage space. But OneDrive for Business in the commercial tenant is by default one terabyte. Now, within SharePoint Online, it's different because each, uh, each basically organization allocates the size for their SharePoint sites by their IT. Their IT gets to decide how much space you have. So you would need to go to your SharePoint administrator and find out how much storage space you have here. But when it comes to permissions, the biggest difference between OneDrive for Business and SharePoint Online is that with OneDrive, the only person that owns that file is you. 
Okay, with SharePoint Online, the files could be owned by many people in the organization because they all have permission to go in and use those files. So SharePoint Online is actually much more powerful than OneDrive for Business because you can set up different permissions on each file. OneDrive, per, OneDrive for Business only allows that from the point of the individual owner of the files being able to give coworkers permission to either edit or view the file. So OneDrive for Business is more limited because it's based on the individual uh, user that owns the files within it. And SharePoint is more broad. So I know that's a very big answer, but just think of it by who has permission to access it. If it's in SharePoint Online, it's anyone who's been given permission to that SharePoint site and permission to the file. With OneDrive, it's just the person who owns the files. And again, they can share those files with their coworkers, but those coworkers would not own the files. It's just the person whose OneDrive for Business uh, account that you're logged into would be the owner. Oh, I know that's a mouthful. Sorry about that answer, guys, but there, that's a lot to talk about. Awesome. So that was the last question. We do have someone who was asking again about uh, getting a copy of this webinar. And we will send out an email to those who attended this with a link to be able to review the webinar. So keep an eye out for that in your email from Zach. Great. Well, again, thanks so much, everybody. Uh, really appreciated you joining us today. I hope this is helping you see that SharePoint Online is not scary. It's really cool. Uh, does it do so many more things? Absolutely. So check out the links that I posted to the chat. Um, those could really, like I said, be, be helpful. They are all Microsoft. By the way, I've not posted anything that's not a Microsoft site, so it's all legit. Um, sometimes people get scared, but those are all basic Microsoft sites. Again, about training, also understanding how Teams and SharePoint Online work, how to create a simple SharePoint Online site. And do remember that it's online. So it's all about making stuff available to everybody in your organization, even when there's a pandemic. And by the way, thanks to all of you for what you're doing to keep us all safe. Let's get through this together. We'll get to the other side, and uh, it is a brave new world that we're, that we're all working in. But again, a huge thank you to Aubrey for hosting the event and to Microsoft, of course. They're not perfect, but we still got to love them. They're the ones creating all this great software, and to Zach Consulting. So thanks, everyone. We really appreciate you being here, and um, have a great day. And thanks, Aubrey. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.